Good evening, design and analysis students, and welcome back to this edition of our screencast where we're talking about factorial ANOVAs. So remember that a factorial ANOVA is an ANOVA that is looking at um, the influence of more than one independent variable on the outcome or dependent variable. So last time we worked at helping to make sure we understood the primary terms of factor and levels and conditions where our factors is the number of independent variables that we have. We also have another variable, our dependent variable or outcome. Our levels are the number of groups that we have within the independent variable. And our conditions is looking across the levels and factors to find out how many separate groups of people we have in our model altogether. In today's edition, we're going to be looking at two other key terms, main effect and interaction. With a main effect, we are considering only one independent variable and see if there is a difference in our outcome across the levels of that first factor, and then the second factor, and then if we had three factors, the third factor. So again, we're looking at one independent variable at a time to see if it influences or relates to the outcome. The second thing we want to do is look at interactions, which is considering not just one independent variable, but all of them to help figure out if together the set of variables has an effect on the dependent variable. Um, sometimes we have conditions where it takes both things together to figure out what the dependent variable looks like. So you might think about this as a more complex or it depends kind of effect. Now. Um, another way that we could consider this is that you could think of a main effect, again, as the effect of each in independent variable by itself. So if we had a one-way ANOVA, we just look at each independent variable um, and see if it has a main effect on its own. But then if we had a factorial ANOVA, we'd have to look at the next factor to see if it influences the outcome. And then together, if the two factors um, have a unique pattern, that helps us understand the outcome only considering both things at the same time. So if you're a metaphor person, you might like the idea of thinking of interactions like an ice cream sundae, All right? If you want to know the taste of an ice cream sundae, you get something completely different when you put these ingredients or independent variables together than if you ate any one of them by itself. All right, ice cream's nice, but ice cream with sprinkles and whipped cream and sundae gets you to a different flavor combination that you cannot get just by looking at one factor or ingredient. Another metaphor that might help for you is thinking of an interaction like when you have a little stressor, no big deal, but then another, then another, and now when those stressors or independent variables interact, you feel way more stressed than if you had if you'd only encountered one of these factors on its own. So this poor gal here looks like maybe she's already struggling. Um, if we were looking back at that quarantine during COVID-19, maybe she's already struggling with her schoolwork, but now she's at home where she can see the dishes piling up and the kids are squabbling. And all of this together has a completely different effect on her stress level um, than if it had been any one piece at a time. So. Take heart if you are in this situation or were during our quarantine days um, that other people have been there and got through it just like you did. Um, you have the strength to continue. But again, this is an interaction possibility. It's not any one thing that's affecting her stress. It's a bunch of things together that helps us understand what's going on for her. Now, if we're trying to understand interactions graphically, all right, and main effects, we are going to need to look at the effect of the first factor, which is going to be shown in a graph on our x-axis um, or our abscissa. The other factor, if we have two factors in our model, is going to be shown by separate lines. So we have a little key here that shows us um, the second factor, in this case music, whether people had music or not. Our first factor was gender, our second factor was music. And we're seeing if each of these, and then both of them together, helps us understand people's stress levels. So this would be a two-way between subjects factorial ANOVA, where we've got two levels of the first independent variable, male and female. We've got two levels of the second independent variable, music or no music. 
and we're seeing how each of these affects stress level and then how together they affect stress levels. So we'll look at each possible main effect and then the interaction. In a factorial ANOVA, we could have no effects going on. We could have one main effect. We could have two main effects. We could have just an interaction. We could have main effects and an interaction. We could have, right, there's lots of combinations. So we want to look at each piece at a time to see if we can figure out what's going on for that dependent variable. Now, I like to use a star method to help me visualize how I'm going to look for a main effect. So I've color matched the stars to the ovals to help you see what we're considering at each time or piece of this model um, to figure out if there are effects on the outcome. So I've circled them first. If we first wanted to look for a possible main effect of gender, we could see whether the males, um, students, or people in our group, the men, are different from the female students or people. So I've circled them here to show you to look at the first effect for gender. We would see whether all of the males are different from all of the females on stress, which is over here on our y-axis or our ordinate. So I'm going to take this little star to help you see the average. All right. First off, if I'm waving my magic wand here, I'm looking to see what is the typical score for males. So I'm going to have to average out these two groups and get a score about here. Then, likewise, I'm going to come over and consider the score for all females together, regardless of the music condition they were in. So I'm going to be averaging these two groups out, which would give us a score about here. Now, if I pull those out to the side on our dependent variable to see if something's going on, does it look like there's a difference between men and women in this study? Average on average? Yeah. Right? Now I say it looks like, because we would still need to go to the ANOVA and figure out if the differences were significant enough um, for us to get excited about it. So we can, our eyes can sometimes deceive us, but that helps you get a feel for graphs and where you would look for those main effects. So in this case, it looks like men typically report lower stress levels than, on average, the women do. So we would say it looks like we have a main effect of gender. Now, with the yellow ovals, um, we're looking at the possible main effect for factor B, which was music condition. So we want to consider everybody in the music condition regardless of gender. So if I take my first star, I'm looking at these folks. This was anybody in a music condition. If I average across the men and women, I get a score about here. If I then try to get the average score for everybody in the no music condition, I'm going to average across these two groups and get a score about here. And so if we pull those out to the side on our dependent variable, I'm going to put them out on this side so we don't get them mixed up with our other um, first factor. It does look like there is a possible difference by music condition as well, another main effect. In this case, it looks like people in the music group, on average, are less stressed than the people in the non-music group. So we also have a main effect of factor B. Then, where we would look for an interaction between these two things is figuring out whether the lines are parallel, or roughly parallel. So in this case, even though they're moving um, diagonally instead of horizontally, these lines don't look like they're going to intersect anytime soon. Maybe they would do so way out here, right? But it looks relatively parallel. So that would suggest to us we do not have an interaction. It's when the lines are not parallel in some important way that we can see an interaction between two variables. Now, let's take a second example where we do tend to see an interaction. And we're going to use our star method again to help us figure out what it is that we're looking at. All right, so first off, let's look at um, gender. All right, let's take the averages by gender. So we've got all of our males. We want to get an average score for them. That's going to be about here. And then we've got our average score for females. That's going to be all these folks, and the average would be about here. And if we pull that out to the side, do we tend to see a main effect for gender? Let me get a hold of this star. 
That one was up here. And it looks like I would say oh, maybe, right? Um, those are in slightly different places. It looks like in this case, women, if our outcome is performance instead of stress, all right, men tend to outperform women on average, okay? It looks like um, this is a possible main effect here, okay? Now, let's look at the effect of music. If we look across our music condition and average across those two groups, we get a score about here. If we take the average of people in the no music condition, we get an average score about here. And when we pull those out to the side, do those look different to you? Well, there's a little bit apart, but I don't think this is going to be a main effect. So I would um, say tends to look like we have no uh, main effect here. Music does not affect performance in this case. Okay. Now we look for an interaction again and a possible crossover or where our lines are not parallel. And we see that between the groups right here there does seem to be an interaction effect going on. So we have to go, well, it depends. Let's start with one group. What happens for males? Well, for males, um, they performed better, if that's our outcome, in the no music condition. Maybe they were shooting foul shots or something here. Whereas women tended per to perform better in the music condition. So we would have to say, well, it depends. The pattern is different for males than it is for females. And that's where we see that crossover interaction happening. Now, for those of you who have me for class, I'm going to skip a couple slides here because we can go back and do some more examples. But I want to show you that you can have many different combinations of effects for main effects and interaction. We could have um, a research study where we don't really find anything interesting. There's no difference by either factor and no interaction. In this case, the means for all of the groups are relatively the same, right? Nothing going on. We could have just an interaction, and a classic interaction is going to look like an X because for one group, they do really better under the first level. And the second group does really better under the second level. So if we have a crossover like this, it tends to show us just an interaction with no main effects. We also then can have only main effects. These three things here help show you um, a main effect of factor A, what that would look like, a main effect just of factor B, or a possible main effect of factor A and B together. None of these have an interaction. They're relatively parallel. Yeah, they're not exactly, um, not perfect, but those lines are relatively parallel, so it doesn't indicate an interaction. This one over here suggests both a main effect and an interaction. Um, this group um, is always a little higher than this group, right? And if we think about averaging for our factor A, the score here versus the score here, it looks like we've got a main effect of A happening, but also an interaction because these lines are going to cross real soon. So if you see that alligator bite or like something that looks like a greater than or less than sign, that tends to indicate an interaction as well. Getting used to interpreting main effects and interactions can be tricky. These ones are also all line graphs. We do the same kind of thing if we were looking at a bar graph for an ANOVA instead of a line graph, or if we were looking at matrices, kind of a table approach. So I encourage you to practice thinking, what is it that I'm getting the average score for to see if those are same or different with either matrices or bar charts or line charts? Your textbook can often help with some examples or there's some stuff you can find online and other people's videos to help do demonstrations to help you keep practicing with main and interaction effects. You're not likely to get it all in one sitting. If this is one of those places that takes you a little practice or rehearsal, just like shooting good foul shots, that perfect dance performance, the, the um, recital you have for music, you're going to need to try this a couple of times until you get used to working with main and interaction effects 
but I know you can do it. Hope this helps.